Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. We live in a really weird age, man. And especially after the creation of Twitter, a social media website that essentially became a political platform, all of a sudden, everyone's a politician. Anytime some major trending news event happens, everyone's gotta go to their Twitter and make a statement. All of a sudden, from the random clueless soccer mom to the random clueless D-list celebrity, everyone becomes an expert. It's a really kind of weird phenomenon phenomenon. Especially when you're exposed to the character behind the political statements. And boy, do I have the perfect example for you guys today. You know, comedians love to pretend as if they have such great understanding of political issues. And throughout the years, they've kind of garnered this authoritative sort of voice on the current political happening. And that's where the Joe Rogan podcast comes in. I know, interesting segue. But when you take one of these clowns, and put them in an environment of open discussion of ideas, well then everything falls apart now, doesn't it? We've got an interesting interaction on the Joe Rogan podcast with Trump derangement syndrome sufferer Jim Gaffigan, and of course, famed host Joe Rogan. Folks, this is your brain on CNN. This is what LARPing as a political analyst looks like. We've got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so you guys have heard me refer to this concept of your brain on CNN many times. This, I think, is the greatest example of that exact phenomenon that I've ever seen. This person, Jim Gaffigan, has absolutely no idea what he's talking about, but you can tell that he's learned every single one of his talking points from CNN and MSNBC. So they, they, they silenced protest, which is right. a part of our freedom of speech. So this is a tactic that some government agencies uh, use okay, to okay, stop but, but peaceful wait a protests. All right, so what you're saying is on January 6th, that uh, this event that obviously Trump organized, forget about the Giuliani stuff and the, uh, you know, whether they thought that it was He definitely stolen. encouraged people to protest. Yes. But, all right, so you're saying that, like, the the FBI and Nancy Pelosi, and, and I'm, I'm not saying to, Nancy Pelosi. No, no, but, like, you're saying that, like, they're like, you know, We'll make this, uh, instead of uh, an awkward protest, we'll encourage it so that it'll be, it'll backfire on Trump rather than being this rising of people that uh, believe that there was election. I think it's certainly possible. I think possible. that would be hard. You think it's possible? I think it's possible. You don't think it's, wait a minute, you think it's hard to do? In a hallway. I mean, I'm exaggerating right. a little bit. Yeah. But, like, I don't see why that would be of use. Like, I'm more suspicious why Trump didn't call for backup when, you know, or, you know, for uh, the for the Capitol Police. You know what I mean? It's like there was and that like Michael Flynn's brother was, you know, what I mean, like there's there's way more conspiracy stuff against. Uh, against Trump and you know then I think the the slim likelihood that people were like oh Trump's a problem let's just get these people that are loyal to Trump to run into the Capitol so that we can arrest 300 people does that make sense no no it doesn't no. make sense no I think it's a standard tactic especially when someone is the enemy of the intelligence agencies with Trump that's absolutely the case. Trump set himself up against the intelligence agencies. It's standard for intelligence agencies in this country to encourage agent provocateurs or to employ agent provocateurs. And so you're saying when he was in Helsinki and he was saying, I believe Putin more than my intelligence community, that was something the intelligence community was like, we're going to get him. Well, I think they were going to get him in any way that they could because he's an enemy of the intelligence agency. In many cases, these are the people who are shaping political opinions for the average headline consumer who really isn't looking past, you know, basic celebrity tweets or, like I said, the headline itself. It's been almost three years since January 6th happened and so much information has dropped. I mean, frankly, it's embarrassing. Three years later and it seems as though you've learnt or you know absolutely nothing outside of what was presented in 
the official narrative. I mean, what you witnessed is proof of MSNBC indoctrination. The level of ignorance is astonishing. Trump should have called for backup. He did. Multiple times. Actually confirmed in text messages with the then sergeant at arms in his communications with Nancy Pelosi's office. But the average person doesn't know this and it's by design. There's always a giant gap in people's understanding and it's done purposely. The media lies by omission and here's the result. And now there's one part that I found particularly frustrating and for me it was absolute confirmation that what we're witnessing is a brain on MSNBC and CNN when he said this. Trump lost the election. He is such a, uh, an amazing communicator and he's convinced this loyal base that there was election interference. That talking point right there I find to be one of the most appalling and one of the most frustrating pieces of bogus left-wing rhetoric. This idea that Trump supporters or people who support Trump on certain issues or, you know, believe certain things, that the only reason they came to that conclusion is because Trump told them to. Just a bunch of mindless NPCs. Trump says something, they go do it. Or that becomes their new stance. This literally could not be further from the truth. In fact, most of the time, it's literally inverted. The stance grows from a grassroots basis, and then Donald Trump, being politically savvy, will pick up on the issue and make it one of his own. You're not operating and you're not arguing from a point of good faith if you're essentially generalizing all Trump supporters and anybody who may support him on particular issues as mindless idiots who are simply participating in a cult of personality. Yet, of course, we hear it all the time. And trust me, the irony is not lost on me. Speaking of that irony, there's also this moment that's making the rounds on Twitter. Or well, I think, look, you know... Uh, Joe Biden's relationship with his son or, uh, you know, who obviously struggles with addiction. I mean, look, half of our friends struggle with addiction. It's like, you know, he's a compassionate father. Is there some of that like um, some, you know, uh, let's make some money with uh, our influence uh, after after we left office or, or even during when, office or when he was even vice when president. we were senator or stuff yeah. like that? Is there some of that? Yeah. It seems like but there's like, a lot of that. But compared to Trump, compared to like Jared getting a $2 billion contract, compared to like, um, you know, like even the documents, like the the documents that like Biden had or, or uh, Pence had uh, versus like Trump literally showing the documents, some of them being of... I think we're going to find out uh, being really inconsequential. I'm not saying he was selling them. I'm not saying I don't know if he was, you know, it was like a big swinging dick move. I think that's different than, um, you know, Pence having some documents in his house that he shouldn't have. It's very little doubt in my mind that that Trump is the the most corrupt and uh you know you know was you know like just the the uh corruption i mean like i but this I, repeated corruption with the biden administration the, the 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 corruption with his son first of all his son struggling with uh, addiction that's not my concern I, that's not what yeah. i it's the corruption it's the the clear influence by foreign agents and foreign you don't think trump has more corruption i don't think there's evidence the same way that there's evidence right now because of the laptop and because of the recorded conversations there's real evidence that they were getting money from other countries what about i mean it's almost painful to listen to it's almost giving me a stomach ache and a headache at the same time donald trump is corrupt and guilty because you know i just i have this feeling there's yet to be any evidence to suggest that Donald Trump was deeply corrupt. I love the way these leftoids always default to the exact same talking point of Jared Kushner and the Saudis. There's no evidence of a Trump criminal enterprise, but somehow Donald Trump is just guilty. I know it. How do you know it? Why do you know it? Well, because the TV box keeps telling me that that's the case. I mean, what a dope. Figuratively and literally, the guy seems like he's, I don't know, on some sort of
of opiate or something. He can barely muster enough energy to speak coherently. But the way he speaks isn't nearly as bad as the things that he's saying. It is nothing but pure ignorance. You know, there's that famous study, we've covered it many times, and people link it all the time. It went really viral during the Trump years, where essentially the findings of the research came to the conclusion that, for the most part, conservative-minded people are absorbing media stories from a more wide array of news outlets, left, right, and center, where lefties were living in a bubble. This is proof. If you live in Hollywood, if you're part of the Hollywood celebrity class that knows everything about everything, they get their information from Rachel Maddow and the Krasenstein brothers. And the new one's probably Harry Sisson. They live in a little news bubble, a little Twitter bubble, and anybody who's not part of that group instantly gets blocked, is not on their feed, and that's how you become Jim Gaffigan. Now look, the clips are pretty long. He said a bunch of stuff. I could have went in and hammered every single point, but come on, we've debunked all those talking points a million times before. I'm not even going to repeat it. You guys already know what it is. Just thought I'd subject you to some tedious suffering. Hope you enjoyed it. That's what I got for you guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.